Okay, so Meet New Eliades is a beloved uh, part of the Tuesday group tradition. We have been having Tuesday group meetings since 2008. Um, and this, in the last couple of years, the amount of times we've been having the Meet New Eliades program of Tuesday group has increased dramatically because we're just seeing so many new folks come into town. Um, as a heads up, just so for people who might be speaking, I encourage you to stay behind the podium, but if you are a mover and a walker, that's okay. Um, it would just be best if you kind of kept yourself near the podium because that's where the camera is pointed. Um, and I will give the microphone over to Alan. Thank you. Thank you. What's next for you? Let me remember and get back to you. <laughs> just focus on the present moment. Not only uh, are there a lot more Meet New Iliad episodes the last few years because of this wonderful influx, but um, a big change is when I started doing this, most of the people were retired, retiring here, so there was no problems with schedules. Now, most of the people in meeting who want to do this are working stiffs, families, young adults. They got so I had like three cancellations uh, the last couple of days because of work issues, and then and so on. So um, it's a neat, it's an interesting and challenging and wonderful uh, development. So we're going to start out quick today because some people, like I said, I got to go back to work. Uh, up comes Coach Dick Brooks. <laughs> Minnesota North College Vermilion Campus head football coach. Is that right? That's correct. Rick. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just made it like 40 seconds ago. <laughs> right on time. All right. Well, okay. Where do we start? Uh, I guess you can tell by my uh, southern draw. I'm not from here. Uh, I'm from uh, Mississippi, and uh, being here ten months living right now. But I've been here before. You won't let off. Um, back in 2008, around about 15 years ago, uh, I was hired as the uh, defensive coordinator here. Um, back in 08. Oh, uh, we were state runner runner ups, and uh, so I was only here for like four months, and so I went back to uh, Mississippi and had several jobs uh, since since then, and uh, applied for the uh, head job here several times uh, to no avail. <laughs> um, so I said, well, I'll try it one more time. Uh, for the past five years, I've been a Hines County Sheriff Officer uh, working in the uh, detention center there. Um, glad I'm not there anymore because it has made national news in the recent weeks. Uh, but anyway, um, I said, well, I'm going to try it one more time. Uh, still didn't get it. <laughs> so they, um, what I was told that a coach was hired. And that coach, I think, just stayed maybe a month, then quit. And so I was called for the job. And uh, it's doing pretty good, content with what my job, my, at the job at the time. But I knew I've been wanting to coach football. That's my call. My father was a college football coach, so I was born into it. And I coached uh, over 30 years previously. so. I said, if I don't take this opportunity, and I know me, I'll probably be kicking myself in the butt because I did. So, said so been easy before. Uh, well, I took it, and I uh, uh, got here July fourth, and uh, we only had ten members on the football team, from what I was told. And uh, of course, you know about. Uh, Colleges is all about enrollment. And so, well, the higher ups told me, said, Well, coach, we got you here, but if you can put together a team, that would be great. If you don't, you understand, uh, you know, based upon, you know, the cost you've been dealt when you only been here in a few months. So, well, that was like mm, five weeks before our first ball game. Uh, three weeks before camp was supposed to start. Well, I got 
scoured the country from coaching buddies and colleagues around the country and everything. I got 42 to 44 guys. Wow. So thank you. Um, didn't do it, but I it was it was a chore. Um, but I know I know me, I know what I can do. Recruiting is one of my uh, uh, good things that I can do, of course, football is concerned. Uh, so, um, well, when that happened, the administration told me, said, Coach, if you don't win a game, you've already won. And that kind of made me feel proud. But, you know, coaching, you know, you got to win. It's all about wins and losses. So, well, well, we didn't do too well, but, you know, but I'm here. And uh, convince the uh, the uh, higher ups that I should be here uh, year round, and uh, they worked it out. So I'm here. <laughs> uh, went through one of you guys' longest winters that you guys ever had. <laughs> but I was tough, and so, but you know, I did a little shoveling and all of that type of stuff, and even the heart attack stuff, as you guys call it. Uh, no problem. It was a workout for me. But the locals, you know, people would tell me, uh, Coach, have you, have you had enough snow, seen enough snow? I said, no, I'm fine. I'm not not big to me. Well, one of my coworkers told me, he said, well, you need to go back to Mississippi. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't want to do that. I said, because it's all relative. I'd rather deal with this snow than deal with those tornadoes and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I miss too. <laughs> Once you've been in a tornado, you don't want to ever go through those again. Trust me. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, got through the winter and everything was great. And, um, so, um, it's a beautiful time town. Um, people, uh, have been well received, uh, most part, 100% that I know of. Um, also, uh, I've been in a 15 year long distance relationship with the lady from here, uh, Patricia Zapazic. Uh, yeah, got to give her a shout out. Say if I did, she'd kill me. Anyway, so, but yeah, um, and that was that was uh, a good thing. Uh, you know, some, some people say, uh, you know, that uh, out of sight, out of mind. Well, my opinion, absence make the car grows fonder. So whenever I come up here to visit, it's like, hey, you know, we haven't seen each other. We don't have time to argue. And she loves to come to Mississippi down south and everything. Oh, when I was coaching in Alabama or coaching in Florida, um, other places and everything. Uh, but we had the long distance thing going and it worked out. Uh the answer was it worked out better than I am mean, here now. But <laughs> but uh, you know, we we uh she's a nice lady, um, and uh her family crazy about me. And I uh, a family also. So uh, one thing about me taking this job is that uh, football can lead the way of uh, great things happening in Ely. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. down, because down south, you know, people, I mean, they are building communities so they can have football. But football is a religion down there. You know, guys like hockey and everything, but I still say that uh, PJ Fleck, uh, University of Minnesota Gophers will give up three of those hockey championships for one football championship. That's my opinion. But, uh, you know, but uh, I really think that uh, the college, uh, Minnesota North Vermilion Campus, uh, our athletic program can uh, come up to par and can lead the way to. Uh, great things happening here in Eden. And I want to be a part of it. And I really think that it, that it can happen. So um, I'm not big on fundraising. I'm not you know, used to that. But we have to see me or any of my guys out there uh, you know, fundraising with our trees help us out. You know, mm -hmm. can be games and really find us, you know, in your heart to help us out a little bit. Uh, but uh, I've enjoyed it so far. Uh, the community has been welcoming, and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. How many, uh, how many home games? Uh, three home games. Three home games. Yes, three home games. And should people go to that? 
Everyone, please attend. Please attend. Yes. I just want to do a thank you for coming to Tuesday group and talking to us. And more importantly, thank you for coming to Vermillion College. I've known 1850 to ride in Ely. And I not only know him as a great coach, but as a great mentor for children. So I think it comes up to you. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, yeah, that's this, what the head coach is all about. Uh, Q and A, whatever you have for me. Yes, uh, okay, yes. Uh, Coach, you talked about the Vermillion Academy. Uh, what 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 do you think is the quite a few uh, churches are doing this, so they have uh, dinners provide dinners. Uh, uh, provide some type of, um, you know, because a lot of our guys, I know my guys speak for, come from uh, different regions of the country. And, you know, you guys can you know, get them coats or jackets or something because, you know, they're coming here in the summertime and mostly by uh, airway or by bus. And they don't have everything that you need, you know, to travel, to, have, to prepare for on later on for the winter months. So uh, their parents have to send a care package or something later on in the winter months or something like that. But if you uh, have anything like coats, overcoats, jackets or something and uh, that you may want to provide, you know, for our guys or whatever, that can be helpful. Um, like I said, dinners on weekends. Invite the team over for supper. Yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, uh, something like that, you know. and. Uh, you know, so yeah, that that could be be helpful. And what I wanted to do is also uh, make my guys this year more visible to the community. And so you, you know, it's all about uh, building relationship. And if you can build a relationship and uh, you know, get to understand one another, no matter what you know uh, differences you may have, but really we all are alike. We all like the same thing. We all want the same thing. Once you get to know, once you get to know each other, and uh, and that's that's what I'm big about. So just build a relationship. So if we can build a relationship with the community, I promise you, we'll we'll we won't disappoint. We'll try to do yes. that. What position did you play? I played defensive back and punter from ninth grade to college. Where'd college? Yeah. Uh, Alcorn State University. Yeah, I heard of it. in uh, Loma, Mississippi. Uh, Big alumni you guys may know would be Steve McNair. Uh, I played with his brother. And uh, so, yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thank you. So, Tom, think about our youngest son is even bigger than him and the black football coach at a college in Montana. So, they've already been in touch with each other. All this, all this recruiting and finding kids' places to go and stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Okay, next next guy is from here. Tanner, come on up. Tanner Spicer grew up here and left. We'll hear what he did. And uh, he could come back and retire, but no. Hi, everybody. Some faces in here I do recognize. Look. Some of the faces in here I do recognize. Um, like, uh, like I said, I grew up here. My parents used to own a resort in town which is now Stony Ridge, but they bought it long before it was ever Stony Ridge. My background is starting in high school, I worked, my first job was, uh, besides delivering papers for the Hibbing News Tribune, was uh, working for the Olson family at New Country Outfitters. Loved it. That's, that's when I fell in love with outfitting. And then following that, I spent several summers working for the Stocks family for Don and Connie and Glenn and Eve out at Jack Pine Lodge and Snowbank Lake. That was absolutely amazing. Loved it out there. Uh, what a great time. What a great time. That's That was the first time I heard a guest. I, it was early morning. Sun was just coming up and I was down cleaning somebody's boat. And I'm picking out cigar butts and beer cans or whatever else. And this guy comes down, stands on the dock from his cabin. He goes, you sure are a lucky young man. I said, oh, really? He says, yeah, you live at a resort. You're always on vacation. <laughs> at the time, I'm thinking, what in the world are you smoking? You're on vacation. But in hindsight, when I look back, I was a very fortunate young man. 
because that was such a rewarding job. To see people when they're there having a good time and enjoying themselves was something that when you're 16, 17 years old, you can't really put into words or even absorb that. But later on, as other careers come around, you look back on that fondly and you're able to remember, hey, you know what? That is the best kind of job. So then after working there, that's what my parents bought. Uh, at the time, it was called Kring's Cabins. They bought that from Gary Craig. And we did a lot of work there, you know, remodeling, putting a restaurant in, taking the bar out that he had there. And then from there, after high school, I left and I joined the service. And I did my time in the service and uh, got stationed overseas. Got, I was given a choice between Germany and Hawaii. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go to Germany. But to look back just a little, <laughs> my senior year of high school, I took one year of German for Mr. Braff. And I thought, this is the dumbest class on the face of the planet. I am never going to use this. I got to Germany. Well, that's when I met my wife. She's from Germany. And Silke spoke exactly zero English. I spoke exactly zero German except Ein Bierbitte. That was it. I was really good at all of it. So it was just a lot of hand gestures and pointing and whatever else till we figured it out. And like, well, any American who doesn't know what they're doing, I thought speaking louder would like help her understand that. It doesn't work. So long story short, we've been married this year will be 30 years this year. So Thank you. Thank you. We have four children. We have Cassandra, Leia, Megan, and Magnus. Uh, Magnus is our youngest. He is 17. All the others are adults and out on their own doing their own thing. Uh, we have one granddaughter, Adalia. She turns a year old on June 2nd. Um, our two oldest, Cassie and Leia, they live down in North Carolina. Uh, Leia's husband is stationed out of Fort Bragg. He's a captain there with the Green Berets. Uh, he's shipping out, what day is today? Tuesday. He's shipping out Thursday. Um, and then Leia and Adalia are going to come stay with us for the summer. So we're looking forward to that. So I get some cramp time. It's going to be fast. Um, our youngest daughter, she is living up here in Ely, and she works over at the Ely Steakhouse and is really loving it there. Her name is Megan. Well, blonde girl, if you go in there, say hi to her. She's very friendly. Is she going to go to school here? Uh, she is staying here for the summer, and then she and her girlfriends are heading down to Duluth. So, yep. But what can you do? Can't keep them home forever. So after the service, I got out, and... Uh, came back to Minnesota. By this time, my parents had sold the resort and uh, bought a restaurant, a couple of restaurants, about one down in Hector, Minnesota, and another one in Chisholm. And uh, my wife and I settled back in Chisholm. Went to school there first at Giving Community College. And from there, I went on and completed my advanced degrees at Concordia University for uh, leadership, organizational leadership. I then uh, became a police officer first in Babbitt, and I was there for about, oh, I don't know, nine months until I uh, got hired down in the Twin Cities. And I told my wife, I said, we're going to take the first full-time police job that comes up. And if it's in the Metro, we're staying a maximum of three years. We're leaving. I don't want to be anywhere near the Metro. So that, that three years went really quickly. It only took 23 of them. And uh, <laughs> in that time, I was very fortunate to get to do all the things that, that you could really ever want to do as a police officer and some things you don't ever want to do as a police officer. In that time, I was fortunate to spend time as a patrol officer. Uh, as a DARE officer, I taught DARE for a number of years. Uh, I was a detective for several years. I got to work undercover narcotics for seven years. Uh, I retired as the senior sergeant for our department. And when I retired, I was very young. 
we were smart and we were able to retire young because we invested properly. And I thought, I am too young to be retired. That was in 2021. Well, my dream, I had never let go of that dream of, I want to get back to Ely. No matter where I went, no matter what I did, and I've seen all different parts of the world, this town is something special. There's something about this place that gets in your blood and it never leaves. The people here are genuine. They welcome everybody in. And it is just, it's really a magical place. And I wanted to get back into the resort or outfitting business. I had over two decades of seeing people not having their best day. That's the thing that really was the least fun about being an officer. Nobody calls you up to say, hey, Sarge, today is just a great day. Come on over and visit. No, that's not how that works. So, you know, after that amount of time, it's easy to become jaded and I didn't want to be that way. Now, when we retired, I took that retirement and I said, honey, we're going to buy a resort. I don't know where, but we're going to buy it. So I started looking at Minnesota resort sets and I'm looking at all these different resorts thinking, oh, you know, we could do this one, we could do this one. And I finally said, I'm, I'm just going to call him. Well, Dan Hool gets the phone. I didn't know Dan Hool was a real estate there and I hadn't seen Dan in over 30 years. And Dan goes, Tanner, have you considered Voyager North Outfitters? I said, Dan, I'm a retired cop. Have you considered the price? No, I haven't thought of that. I didn't know about my business. So he put me in contact with Gordy Winsenberg from CMG Finance, and they walked me through this process. I got a crash course in business really quickly. We ended up buying, buying Voyager North Outfitters. Absolutely fantastic. The O'Kanes did a great job building that business. They, they had bought it in 1981 and had almost 20 canoes at that point. When we bought it, we had just over 400. So there's a lot of boats there. So I thought, you know, this is fantastic. So I took some of what I had learned in my previous career and applied it to this. So that first year I spent just watching the O'Kanes and how they did things. And I kept a journal. This works. I don't like how this is. This is really efficient. This isn't so efficient. The next year, I just watched the employees and I watched how they worked. And I did the same thing. Kept that journal. Then over the winter, I took my time implementing new policies and getting things more efficient, streamlined. I established some structure in there. Uh, being, being in paramilitary or military for 30 years, that kind of built up in me, chain of command is important and there should be organizational leadership. So that's what we put in place. And it's been fantastic. Last year, I was able to purchase two more city blocks across from Spirit of the Wilderness. And the reason I bought it at first was, I'm not sure what to do with it, but I know I'm gonna use it later. I don't know for what. Well, I listened to what people asked for when they called. I listened at the sports shows, common themes I heard. I would love to get my wife to go out there, to go to the Brothers, but she doesn't want to sleep on the ground. She doesn't want to sleep with the bugs. We're getting too old to sleep out there. We have a special needs family member who can't spend the night out there. Or we can't get the permit we want because the permits are so reduced. But we want to go see this stuff. Hotels in town, it's just too much. We don't want to stay there. We want some privacy. So I what can I do about that? Well, then, that, why don't I build a resort in town? So I got a hold of a bunch of different contractors and we settled on Voyager Log Homes out of Cook, Minnesota. And we're going to build five log cabins down there along with a lodge with the idea of people come and they stay for a week. And this was the other thing that the other motivation I had behind this. As a young man, I remember the economy in Ely being stronger. Part of that was because there was still other industry up here. People were able to get the clients. 
in that time, tourism is now our backbone. But it can only support so many. So what could I do in my own sphere of influence to help lift this up? Without fitting, we at our business, and jump orders like that, we get our piece of the pie, but then we're sending people out in the woods and they're gone for a week or two, and they're not giving anybody else in town that money. <laughs> well, that's that's not helping everybody as much as it could. So the idea with the resort, they stay for a week. I give them a canoe or a fat tire bike with their rental. They go out, they adventure in the woods, but they come back to town. And then every other business in town is going to get a piece of that pie because then they're going to go downtown, they're going to eat, they're going to shop, they're going to go to all the stores. That's our biggest goal is I want to grow within what's in my power. I want to grow the economy of Ely. I want every other small business in this town, no matter who it is, they're not competition. I want them to come up because a rising tide is going to raise those ships. That's going to make it better. Something else I want to do. I put new managers in place. I was fortunate in my previous careers to have some outstanding leadership. Leadership that looked beyond my immaturity at the time, my lack of experience at the time, and they saw potential that was there that can grow you. I like to carry that forward. I did that when I when I was in command positions in the police. And I can do that here because while outfitting is now my second, well, third career, it is not typically the career for my employees. But I want to prepare those employees for later because if I prepare them now and I give them that opportunity to step up to the plate to fulfill that position that I put them in. That's going to better prepare them for a job in a career down the road, not just a job. And it's going to make that make them that much more efficient and productive for their future employers. So now, for example, after this here today, I have a meeting coming up with our supervisors. And they go, they get an agenda every day that they, or every week, I give them the agenda the Friday before so that they know what we're going to talk about. Each one of them takes a turn keeping minutes. We review those minutes at the meeting, and then they get my marching orders, what I want to see done, how I want to see it done. And I release them to go do it. And I'm not a helicopter leader. Empower them to do it, and they'll fill that position. So I encourage all of you to stop down. We're open year round. And, uh, I welcome all of you. Thank you. And I think we need to Tanner Spice to come back and tell us more. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Lou and Sammy Wigan. Uh, so I knew Lou when he was what five, seven years old, something. In Duluth, his parents are colleagues and good friends. And here he shows up in Ely. Uh, Really, to hear about this this couple. Who <laughs> <laughs> Wigan, Sandy Wigan, and who are we? Well, first and foremost, we were married a year ago yesterday <laughs> on the Bass Lake Trail, and we closed on our home in the town of Ely in October. End of October. Um, Sammy is has one more semester left um, for school to become an RN, and uh, we're looking forward to that school being over because she commutes from our home in Ely three days a week, or has been commuting three, four days a week to Duluth to finish school. Um, so October, end of October, we moved up here. I was transitioning jobs, and I have to give a shout out to coach Tom Coon, because I reached out with him via email and said, I want to coach basketball and you volunteer. And I got a phone call a week later from head coach Tharp of Vermilion Community College who said, you're hired. You really know, no pay, but you were hired. <laughs> well, there, there was some stipend, but after taxes, it's actually no. 
Um, and a big shout out to Coach Brooks, who I've got to know while I've been at Vermillion, and one of one of the players for us, Ronald Ducros, is here, the leading rebounder. So when we first got here, we honestly thought that we'd be Airbnb in our home and we'd be living in another town. And my wife told me that's not happening. The moment we moved in, we, it was time to nest. And I'm um, really grateful to her and to that decision because since that time, we've got to know so many fantastic people. And just like what Tanner had said, we have felt welcome by such a, a wonderful group of like-minded, large-hearted, kind people. And we really got lucky. I mean, I knew of Ely as a kid. Um, both Sammy and I, our fathers brought us here when we were very little to the boundary line. And that was really our, our main reason for moving here was to be closer to this place. But it has turned into so much more than that. We've really been very welcomed in this community. So to all of you, thank you so much for being, you know, great human beings, because I think that's that's really, really special. Um, all right, what's next? What are you up to? Oh, what, are you yeah. doing? what are you doing? <laughs> so I work uh, this summer, I'll be at, I am at the Spirit of, of the Wilderness, working in Dial Center. Um, after this, I have to run actually in about 10 minutes, I'll be going and working catering for the film crew in town. My friend Josh Bring is a heck of a cook, and he got the catering contract. So I'll be catering until June, and then early June, I'll be serving and doing a little bit of bartending at Birdside Lodge. Um, I was just going to say, I've gotten this question a couple of times. Lou is trying to make that happen. So it's, I think so. We hope so, that it will be. <laughs> So yeah, what, what, what else am I doing? So you wear some hats at the college. So I was hired for, a, thank you, Alvin. I was hired uh, to work for a nonprofit called Project Legacy. And we are waiting to find out on grant funding. And if um, that grant funding comes through, um, my position will be consistent for the next two years. We'll be able to hire another position through Project Legacy and what Project Legacy will be doing will be supporting BIPOC students. A majority of those students are Vermillion students um, who come from rough backgrounds who don't have the financial support. Um, and we'll be doing everything from finding them transportation, counseling, some of the things that Coach Brooks was talking about that we're really in a need of, which that is, you know, winter gear for kids that are coming from New Orleans, for example. Um, financial support for mentoring, for um, uh, finding them next steps for their, you know, because Vermillion is only a two-year school, and a majority of these athletes were our goals to get into a um, Division II or Division NAA program. And so really trying to help and helping them to focus on what are those the best steps for their future. So I'll know more about that in a couple of weeks. I'll keep, I'll keep everybody posted. <laughs> what else we got? What do you like to do for fun? <laughs> well, right now I really don't do anything but work. Uh, love to paddle and fish. Elton and I are going to be taking an adventure on Monday. We're going to be either going to Paxton Pond or to Wind Lake. Don't don't tell them. Okay, <laughs> forget that. We're, we're going somewhere. Um, but yeah, we. We, we like to nest, we love to read, we love good music, we love good streaming TV shows, we love sunsets, fishing, eating fish, um, adventure, yeah. you name it. If you like it, we probably like it too. Welcome to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. He gave me this shirt. I don't know what the heck an iron talk is, but uh, went to some basketball games and boy, I'm a new fan. It's so much fun. Uh, you're really in sports. Check it out next uh, fall. You're going to be coaching basketball, too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I mentioned we had some cancellations. So last night, I got late, uh, late yesterday, a late invitation to a pizza party. And there I met this couple I'd already heard about. 
And they said, okay, so come on up, Steve and Jen Toddy. T O D D I E, Steve and Jen, who are now they've settled uh, settled here, they're going to be leaving. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Jen, and this is my husband, Steve, and we moved here full time last summer. We have a nine year old daughter, Asa, who's currently at the school here in third grade. And we have a year old English setter named Smokey, who might be around town. And we have a 27 year old son who lives on Harvey Street with his partner, and he works at the Ely Outdoor Company. And Jane works at Winter Green, sewing, 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 always sewing. She also has her own private sewing business. She'll be selling some things at the market this summer. So look out for Made by Jane. She's a quilter extraordinaire. Um, and then we have middle son, Wyatt, who's 20, and he lives in the cities. He's in school studying art at the U. Um, and I guess my relationship with Ely began back when I was 15. And I owe it all to, she's not here, but um, a dear old family friend, Polly Carlson Boyle. Yeah. <laughs> She was one of my mom's best friends, and she's the one that sent me on the Whitby bus, and there was no turning back. <laughs> I knew someday I would want to spend the rest of my life here, so I spent many fun summers at Whitby. Um, Our boys have spent a lot of a lot of good time at Whitby, both as campers and on staff. Um, and that relationship with that place has just been really dearly to my heart. I think kind of amazing who I am today. And so then when I met Steve, the first thing we did the week after we got married was buy a property out on Wolf Lake Road. Um, and so we lived there on and off because we still worked in the cities um, for what, 12 years or so. Yeah. Um, a little tiny. 12 by 18 upgrade cabin that we just love, 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 love. Um, and then we ended up selling that in so that we'd have some financing to do some traveling, which we did. And after that long period of traveling, we decided we just couldn't go back to the city. And we've been living in a really small town in um, North Star, Costa Rica. Um, and but we knew that we wanted to come back to the state because we had the other kids here. And what place reminded us of North Star Costa Rica in that it had people with a lot of heart and depth and solid relationships and wild. So decided to sell everything at home in the cities and move here. And we're super happy that we did. Um we live three miles away from our oldest kid on the Tack Night Trail, literally door to door. Like we can walk to one another's homes, so that's oh. pretty cool. Yeah, and um, I'm a teacher. I've been an educator for 30 years, and um, I've been doing some nature preschool workshops out at our place. Um, and in, in the process of figuring out how to collaborate with our friend Sunshine and Happy Days, and um, really try to serve the community from that standpoint. Um, okay. Hi, I'm Steve, Jen's husband. Um, so she gave all the background, I guess. Um, I can tell a little bit about myself. Um, I, uh, I was, uh, originally, I, uh, I, uh, I graduated from school in the Twin Cities and um, left to the Peace Corps in the Dominican Republic. And upon returning, um, went to um, graduate school in New York, thinking that I was going to uh, work overseas for the rest of my life um, in international development. Um, that I did that for about eight to 10 years and then moved back to the cities basically because I wanted to be close to my parents as they were getting older. And that's where I met Jen, doing a little project for her. 
Um, I fell in somehow when I moved back to Minnesota, I fell into contracting and that's what I've been doing is I've been working as a general contractor for the last 20 years. Um, but my prior, prior to doing that, um, I've worked in, in international development and nonprofit management. Uh, so we decided to pull up shop and, and come up here and, and we're sort of, I mean, for me professionally, I, I uh, love carpentry, I love contracting, but I also love the nonprofit stuff that I kind of let go 20 years ago. So uh, both of those things are dear to my heart. I'm trying to figure out how to meld them together. And you're leaving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only temporarily. Yeah. So yeah, we, uh, we um, have, felt that we were, when we lived in Costa Rica, it was during COVID and, and we came back with the intention of returning, but we never were able to. Uh, so this fall, we'll be returning for a year to Costa Rica, um, to the same place we lived before in Osara, Costa Rica. Um, we have a lot of friends there and we just feel that we need to tie that knot that we never got to tie up. So we'll be heading out there in August, but this is our home base. Yeah. Any questions? You in Beaver's house? Did you buy Beaver's house? No. Pointer. Pointer's house on Raven Lane. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Well, have a good year. Uh, you'll be around the summer, though. Yeah. All summer, yeah. yeah. And then uh, gone for a year and then back for the next summer. Yes, so great. And your daughter will go to school in Costa Rica. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, two young uh, people who are in training right now to be interns for Save the Boundary Waters. And uh, what uh, who's going to do the introduction? Patty? Or, uh, Oh, just just straight on. <laughs> this is Max. I don't know your last name. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Mag Leaf. I am the Boundary Waters Connect intern for this summer. I am originally from Winona, Minnesota, so way down south. And I came up here to go to Vermilion Community College. And I actually recently just graduated in class of 2020. And um, I graduated with a major in wilderness and parks management. And I also am a Fireline EMT and a wilderness EMS. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I, I love Ely ever since I came up here. Um, the first time for college, I fell in love with the city and the people. and. There's just something about the energy of this town that is just like so different from any other town that I've ever been in. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to get to know everyone this summer and do some interpersonal connection stuff. And yeah. <laughs> All right, so my name is Ruby. Um, I am an intern for the Boundary Waters. I am originally from Arizona, um, so I've come quite quite a ways to be here. Um, I had never been to Ely before coming here. I had been to the Boundary Waters on the Gunflint side. Um, so I have family around Minnesota, and so it was always like an annual trip to go from Arizona to the Boundary Waters. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. You know, I I think that what everybody has said so far is definitely true. It's a very welcoming town. Um, and there's definitely something special about Ely. You can just kind of feel it in the air. Um, yeah, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I am currently studying environmental studies and anthropology at the University of Arizona, um, which is in Tucson. Um, Tucson is about an hour and a half southeast of Phoenix, if you know where Phoenix is. Um, and yeah, I was born and raised in Tucson, and I'm excited to live here for the summer. Thanks so much. Um, the next episode of Be Real, I told me, 
Mark it down August 8th and give me names. So do you remember what next week is yet? Fearless leader. Oh, that would be very good. Steve, going to say anything? Steve, bottling? Yeah, yeah, Steve, why don't you introduce yourself? We got a few minutes here for the summer. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Steve Boatman, and I come from Hawaii to work here at Paragus for this summer. <laughs> and uh, my story is, I, I don't know if I want to live here all the time, but I might. I like it a lot. <laughs> I like the people. Um, so my family comes from, um, well, my father's side came, came from Germany. And... Um, there was five brothers, I guess. So I have an unusual name and the five brothers came from Germany and I guess they only had daughters or something. So there's only like a really few of us in the United States and I'm the only one, my name in the world. <laughs> Steve Bobelin. Yeah, like a bow tie. Half the people here are Steve. So you're talking about your last name. Yeah, just say Steve B, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, so what, what happened was, and the reason I came here was I was uh, a little kid and I lived in Minnesota, but I don't really remember it very much. But I do remember going canoeing. And my family came up here and took us to the Boundary Waters and we went canoeing. And then we moved away from Minnesota. My father was an academic and um, a professor of religion. So we moved around a little bit, but I guess they stayed in touch with the family that they went camping with. And they came back when I was about seven. And so I remember that. And I remember paddling and I remember pictographs on the cave, uh, not a cave, on the, on the rock wall. And uh, so I put two and two together a few months ago and figured out it was Hegman Lake, right? So um, I didn't know that outfitters existed. I didn't know there was such a thing. I thought that'd be like a store in a mall or something, right? <laughs> and so uh, uh, a few years ago, right before I retired as a teacher, in Hawaii, I um, I decided I'd go on YouTube and see. I wonder if they have any videos about canoeing. And that sort of began an entire obsession. And so, because I remember going canoeing um, when I was a child, but I never thought, well, how could I ever do that, right? So um, I found Ely and then I realized, oh, that's the place right there. It was Camp Du Nord. That's where we went. And so um, that was right by Ely. So I learned more about Ely and studied up on it and uh, applied for jobs around Ely and um, ended up at Paragus. And I'm working as an outfitter. So that's perfect because um, that's really actually what I really wanted to do was learn more about canoes and canoeing and outfitting because. Why not? And so that's Don't my story. Don't in Hawaii? Mar pardon me? Don't you have canoes in Hawaii? Oh, yes, they do. The canoes in Hawaii are very different than the ones here. They're dugout canoes and they're like group canoes where a whole bunch of people ride in them and they paddle on the ocean. And the ocean is just so very different than flat water canoeing. And I like flat water. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, the problem is that I think I am really at heart a Minnesotan because I was when I was a little kid. So I think I get credit for that. <laughs> plus, plus I listen to Prairie Home Companion a lot. 
And plus, I was a teacher, so I was paid to be nice. What did you teach? What did you teach? I was an early childhood specialist at um, at the University of Hawaii Lab School, huh. and so I was um, with student teachers, and we developed curriculum. So um, it was a lot of nature based curriculum being in Hawaii, and so we tried to have authentic authentic things like that, but. You see, they whisked me away from Hawaii. Here, hold this microphone. Oh, boy, you're going to dance. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but I'm show and tell. Yeah. I could have been a Minnesotan. I tell you. <laughs> I'd fit right in. Yeah. Right? So if you see me around town, ask me to go paddling with you. <laughs> What would, it, what would it take for us to convince you to stay and not go back to Hawaii? Well, my wife is still in Hawaii, so. Uh, you have to work on her. Yeah. Is she going to visit this summer? No. And I hope she doesn't see this live broadcast. <laughs> well, she's watching. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Well, I'm glad you came. I'm still around. Have a good week.